The uh, chiefs and the community leaders of this beautiful island of Kyo. The uh, chief celebrant, Pastor Tehulu Mika. Fiji Robin Ambassador, Ambassador Likia Mawi, who is a member of my delegation. The Commissioner Nol, Mr. Chavez over there. The um, chairman of the Council of Kiowan and the chairman of the Council of Rampa. The um, Temalo Kikaying Aliki, the chiefs of the people of Kiowan. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, our boys and girls. Talofa Temalu, Nisambul a very good morning to you all. Today marks another historic and joyful occasion for me and my wife, Sarote, as we join you in celebrating 70 years since your elders or your forefathers from the island of Waitupu in Tuvalu settled here in Kiowa Island. And I wish to convey to you all our warmest greetings and congratulations on behalf of government and the people of Fiji. I also extend a very special welcome to the Honorable Prime Minister of Tuvalu and your good wife and your good delegation, sir. Many of whom I met when we were in Tuvalu recently. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just over three weeks ago, my wife, Sarah and I had the pleasure of representing Fiji at Tuvalu's 39th anniversary of independence. Our memories of that visit are still very fresh. 
and I believe we will linger for quite some time, especially given the great honor that Tuvalu bestowed on us when we spent about four days on your beautiful nation. We were treated to fish since the first day of our arrival on Thursday the 28th of September until we departed reluctantly on Tuesday the 3rd of October. <laughs> We learned to fatele. In fact, my wife was the first to join me. And somehow, His Excellency, the Governor General, and the Honorable Prime Minister convinced me that the fatele could take away the pain from my knee. <laughs> so I joined with the rest of my team. <laughs> well, I brought a bigger team with me today. They are sitting here. Just in case we have to join the Honorable Prime Minister again in the Fatela. <laughs> and I'm glad to see that the Commissioner has also come in full force with government heads of departments in the Northern Division. It's going to be quite a party. Back in Tuvalu, we also witnessed the type of choir competition we have never <laughs> seen elsewhere in our lives. The boisterous conduct of the choir masters and choir mistresses were exceptional. I commented to the Honorable Prime Minister when I was watching you, sir, conduct the choir. I told our friends back in Suva and other parts of Fiji that, you know, we should go and see how you conduct your choir. <laughs> but back in Tuvalu, we also witnessed a type of choir competition we had never seen before, as I said. The um, passion in which you know, not only the choir masters, but the choir sang. It was quite infectious. It confirmed how you like to sing praises to the Lord. I believe that they could easily outperform any choir conductor in a competition that aims to stir the spirit and emotions with excitement. I can see that again today. The conductor certainly added life to the vibrant island melody and made the competition truly memorable. I I hadn't laughed so much in a long time. But there were other great things we learned whilst in Tuvalu. The people's belief and devotion to Almighty God was almost unparalleled. We noted this with great admiration and respect. Your reverence to God. We also noted how the Tuvaluans are not waiting for the world to come and save the islands from the rising sea level. They have started to take action against climate change by extending the shorelines, the foreshore of Funafuti, among other projects. They are doing whatever they can. And I was so impressed with the work that they have done for the borough pits. Whilst in Tuvalu, our government asked me to reiterate Fiji's offer to assist the people of Tuvalu just in case our collective efforts to address climate change are not hated by the major polluters of this world. Fiji is offering all Tuvaluans another home, somewhere else to go. Fiji is promising not only to open our homes and our hearts, but also to help keep alive the spirit of Tuvalu and its people, including your history and your culture. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased that the Honorable Prime Minister of Tuvalu is here today to witness the manner in which you, the people of Waitupu, have settled in Kyo Island where you have called home for the past 70 years. The 37 early settlers who arrived on this island on the 26th of October 1947 have certainly grown in numbers. We now have among us today the second, the third, and possibly the fourth generations of the early pioneers and settlers. And I'm particularly gratified to see and feel that you have preserved your unique culture and traditions and the spirit of your motherland to us. The canoe fortilla, how we were carried ashore, the use of the foam, the preparation of the Fakala or the great feast and the accompanying fatele are symbolic of the authentic and very rich culture and traditions. 
My wife and I are most honored to be accorded with these traditions for the second time within a month. Nawalewu Kayaksi. As we were making our way to your beautiful island this morning, I reflected on the wisdom of your elders to settle here in Kiowa some 70 years ago. They may have moved on for various reasons, perhaps as a continuation of our Pacific Islands fame as prolific seafarers. They were certainly in search of a new land, a new home. I also reflected on Fiji's willingness to accommodate the people of Tuvalu at that particular time. In my view, both our forefathers had forbearance and foresight. What they did was to pave the way for our people to live together, side by side, and we have done this successfully for the past 70 years. Well done and congratulations. And whilst we are Fijians now, I applaud you, the people of Kiowa, to maintain your distinct culture and traditions. As a nation, we're going through some major positive transformations. The consistent socio-economic progresses we are experiencing are helping us to address and bridge any gaps that exist in our society. Every effort is being exerted to ensure that no one is left behind as we modernize our beloved nation. Our constitution in particular is geared towards providing equal opportunities for every single Fijian, without exception. Opportunities such as the right to a decent and sustainable life, free of any form of discrimination. Opportunities like access to the basic necessities of life, to affordable quality of education, and improved health care, among many others. We have begun the journey, and we will eventually get to where we want to go. Our ultimate goal is to leave no one behind. And our focus, as you are well aware, is not limited to our domestic interests. We are now taking on unprecedented leadership roles within the global community. Our Prime Minister, as we speak, the Honorable Varangi Manimarama, with a strong backing from our Pacific Island leaders, is ready to take on the presidency of COP23. We are determined to persuade the world to take decisive action now against climate change to help all our low-lying countries in the Pacific and around the world and to help save planet Earth and humanity. We are ready to paddle forward together, sir with our Pacific neighbors to tell our story by bringing our island's vulnerabilities to climate change to the forefront of global attention. We realize that we have to strongly advocate the message of climate change, but in the Pacific spirit of respectful listening on consensus building. We will stand shoulder to shoulder with each other, engaging in vigorous Talanoa sessions that are aimed at decisive action against climate change. Beyond the message of climate change, we are promoting the concept of leaving no one behind. It is a genuine Pacific concept. Today, as we celebrate your 70 years of settlement in Kior, I ask that we reflect on this concept. That we reflect on this unique arrangement that has allowed us to live together in unity and in harmony for the past 70 years. And I ask that we continue to build on this concept for the sake of our children, who are our future hope and leaders of tomorrow, not only in Tuval, but here at home and throughout the Pacific. This should be our renewed Pacific way. May Almighty God continue to bless Kior and his people and the government of the people of Tuval and our beloved nation, Pavitailasi Navalyu Pech. Yes. We will ask the yeah, president of Fiji, together with the Prime Minister of Tuvalu, to officially cut the ribbon and unveil the curtains for the monument. Okay. So we cut the ribbon, there we go, and we unveil the ribbon. There we go, sir. You cut. Good. There we go. And then we unveil it. There we go. There you go. Please, a big round of applause.